Next, a modern spy story involving Russia and the United States once again. The announcement came late this afternoon from the Justice Department. Ten Russian intelligence officers arrested for allegedly serving as illegal agents of the Russian government in the United States. A statement was released saying that eight individuals were arrested Sunday for allegedly carrying out long-term deep cover assignments in the United States on behalf of the Russian Federation. It went on to say that two additional defendants were also arrested Sunday for allegedly participating in the same Russian intelligence program within the United States. Each of the ten faced charges, including conspiracy to act as an agent of a foreign government, nine of the defendants are also charged with conspiracy to commit money laundering. Court papers said their main mission was to, quote, search and develop ties in policymaking circles in the United States, instructions they received from Russian intelligence headquarters in Moscow. The arrests come just a week after Russian President Dmitry Medvedev visited the United States, touring Silicon Valley in California to underscore what he and the White House say is a new era in the U.S.-Russian relationship. After White House talks last week, Medvedev and President Obama celebrated what they called the successful reset of the bilateral relationship. When I came into office, the relationship between the United States and Russia had drifted, perhaps to its lowest point since the Cold War. There was too much mistrust and too little real work on issues of common concern. That did not serve the interests of either country or the world. Indeed, I I firmly believe that America's most significant national security interests and priorities could be advanced most effectively through cooperation, uh, not an adversarial relationship with Russia. The arrests occurred in a number of locations along the East Coast, Montclair, New Jersey, Yonkers, New York, Manhattan, Boston, and further south to Arlington, Virginia. One defendant remains at large. The case is a result of a multi-year investigation by numerous government agencies, including the FBI. And to take a closer look, we turn to Mark Hosenball, an investigative correspondent for Newsweek magazine, and Glenn Howard, the president of the Jamestown Foundation, which focuses on terrorism and intelligence issues in Russia and other countries. Welcome to both of you. Mark Hosenball, what can you tell us about the people involved and, and what they were doing? Well, these are a, a set of apparently four apparently married couples, long-term Russian illegal penetration agents who came to the United States, uh, literally pretending, uh, very well schooled, very well trained in espionage, very well trained in Americans, but they're Russians, uh, and their job was to infiltrate the United States, establish themselves as uh, uh, Americans, essentially, or fake Americans, and then to go around not actually stealing American secrets, but rather looking for people that they could refer to Moscow, who then would be recruited to steal secrets. So they're they're not exactly directly spying themselves. They're talent spotters. They're they're supposed talent to, spotters. Yeah, that's ah. I think one way to describe them. And and, and this this notion of uh, the deep cover kind of living as Americans. How did they do that? They're, they're, some of the names were. Well, they're, oh, yeah, they they gave yeah. themselves fake names. Yeah. They 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 created uh, so-called legends, stories for themselves and backgrounds. They 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 planted themselves in communities. And you know, actually raised families in some cases of American children. Uh, this is sort of classic uh, Cold War espionage. The Russians used to do this, uh, you know, uh, throughout most of the Cold War. But we thought that, at least we thought, I guess, that some of this was over by now. And this this is line very intriguing here about to search and develop ties in policy-making circles. Now, what does that mean? What, who who were the targets? You say they were looking to make contact with. People well, in policy making circles. Well, they, they've given me, I've, the, the authorities that I've spoken to have given me some examples as to the sort of people, the sort of talent that they were spotting. They apparently had some contact with a, some kind of nuclear engineer who was working on weapons programs. They had contact with some kind of fundraiser here in Washington who had good connections uh, apparently into the Obama administration. They apparently were assigned to go around universities or one or more universities and, and try and find out who. Uh, the CIA was recruiting from the students at those universities so that then they, other people in the, in the SVR could target those CIA recruits for potential recruitment as, as, as uh, intelligence informants. So, you know, this is, uh, and apparently they were also tasked to find out information before uh, President Obama went to Russia about a year ago on his first trip 
uh, so they, but, but they were not assigned, one of the things they were not assigned to do was to, or at least one of the things they were not accused of doing anyway, is obtaining American secrets themselves. They were setting up other people to obtain American secrets. All right, so Glenn Howard, give us some background here. I mean, you, the details are just coming out here. We're all just learning them in the last couple hours. But the, the, the agency behind all this, who are they? Well, this is uh, the Russian intelligence services working through in the United States, but uh, they're basically using uh, assets that they've recruited or Russians working, living and working here in the United States that are employed by the Russian intelligence services. So this is a part of a, uh, a network that they've been establishing deep inside these communities where they've been assigned to work and to develop access to the most important aspect, which I thought was uh, access to policymaking circles. Well, now, what, is that, what does that mean? I mean, Mark was referring to Cold War era. We remember the, you know, the, the, the looking for nuclear secrets, for example. What, are they, what would they be looking to gain now? I think the, one of the things you mentioned is that their ability to uh, target fundraisers for different uh, political parties. Uh, what they're trying to do is gain access to some politician uh, that, uh, that down the road would be of some influence. And I'm sure the people that they were targeting didn't know that they were dealing with Russian intelligence agents. But the point is, is that once they uh, get these people into their network and get into the fundraising circles, and that's, that's the policy making access that they so much desire because it does uh, it ends up being points for them further down the road uh, when they want certain people to testify before Congress who may have links or people that they prefer to present certain uh, points of view favorable to Russia. I mean, this is all part of an image building process in the United States that has gone uh, all around the country, even even buying public relations companies working for the United States uh, in Congress and on the Hill. Uh, that's been very well known, I mean, about the extent of Russian influence. Well, very well known. So is it a coincidence? What's the timing? What do you make of the timing here? As we said, it's a, a week after the visit by President Medvedev. A and and the, the two leaders coming together to say, hey, we're getting together. It's a reset of the relationship. I think it's, um, I think it's definitely uh, a sign by the Obama administration and President Obama himself that you know, Dimitri, we can have a great relationship, uh, and you know, we don't want to go back to the Cold War. But you know, but by the way, I'm no pushover, and you're doing things illegally in my country. And uh, and he's basically putting Moscow on notice that they uh, they can't continue this type of activity. And it, it's I'm c quite surprised by it because I know that I've heard anecdotal incidences of uh, of um, FBI trying to push into the White House, trying to get this thing brought to the pres attention of the president, and trying to get some type of level of action uh, to stop this level of activity that has surpassed Cold War levels. Uh, surpassed, uh, you Surpassed. Say. Uh, Russian spying activity in the United States has, is now greater than it was during the Cold War. So, so Mark, if, 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 if a lot of this was known, are there any signs that in this particular case that the effort had any successes or impact? Well, they, they do say that they managed to get in touch with this fundraiser. Again, right. how much they managed to produce out of him, whether they got him to do anything for them, it, it's not clear to me at this point. They, they did apparently manage to get contact. Uh, again, how much this produced for Moscow, we don't know. We see no evidence here at all that any American secrets were compromised, although, again, there was some interest in cultivating people involved with the American nuclear weapons program. So there are elements here that we don't know. On the other hand, we also know that the FBI has been onto this group uh, for what was described to me as several years. Years, right? They, I mean, they, that's, they, that's intriguing correct. as well. They seem to have been, at one point been able to plant Russian-speaking undercover informants or officers. We don't really know. They're just described as UC in here. Uh, on these people to, to, and pretended that they were uh, SVR officers themselves. So there's a very elaborate operation that went behind this, and they obviously know a lot about this that they're not necessarily telling us. And yet. it was ongoing for years, but very little. You knew nothing. Did anybody oh, I knew know nothing much about, about it. it. I spoke yeah. this afternoon to somebody yeah. whose job yeah. it is uh, within the government to at least know some things about counterintelligence. Uh, and they said that they hadn't heard a word about this. They, nobody's denying that, that the Russians have been up to stuff mm -hmm. uh, like this. It's just that this particular operation seems to have been very closely and well he well held. Had you heard of any of, of any something like this uh, in the works? Uh, yes, for past couple, not in the works now, but uh, mm -hmm. for the past couple of years, uh, there have been this, these types of reports. And, and the key thing here is to bear in mind that after 9-11, the United States, President Bush and President Putin at the time, 
had a gentleman's agreement that they would not conduct uh, using their diplomats, they would not be using spying inside the United States. And the key thing uh, that so far they've, they've adhered to this gentleman's agreement, but they've been using at lower levels, they've been using these plants, that they, these people in these communities, they have been using that network flagrantly. And it has been brought to the attention several times before, and only now have they decided to, to, to act on it and, and to break up these networks because they've been flying under the radar, and that's in these communities. And that's I'm sorry, and briefly, what happens next? Well, they bring these people into court. One of them is still on the run. And mm -hmm. my understanding is that one was an intermediary, with what they call a cutout, whose job it was to pass messages and money backwards and forwards between the, the SBR and, and these people. They catch him, but they have these other people in custody. They, they bring them into court, and we see whether they are, want to go to trial or whether they plead out, and, and then we'll find out more information about this whole thing. All right. Mark Rosenbaugh and Glenn Howard, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.